Dámy a pánové, milí přátelé, vážení hosté, ještě jednou mi dovolte, abych vás přivítal na zájení pátého ročníku Masarykových dnů s názvem Neklidný svět. A dovolte mi pár slov na úvod. Náš svět je neklidný, podobně jako byl ten Masarykův svět. Masaryk to neměl jednoduché na univerzitě ani v občanském životě. Zažil mnoho politických bojů, zažil světovou válku, měl hodně trápení v osobním životě. Stále nás ale může inspirovat. Nejde o to, a to bych rád zdůraznil, nejde o to s ním ve všem souhlasit. Naše univerzita se k němu hlásí spíše proto, jakým způsobem hledal pravdu, jakým způsobem se snažil být zorientovaný a aktivní, jakým způsobem se snažil racionálně myslet. Dnes si můžeme například připomenout, jak se snažil hledat pravdu v různých antisemických případech. Dovolte mi nyní, abych připomněl program Masarykových dnů. Dnes zazní přednáška Ariela Feldsteina, našeho hosta a dlouhodobého spolupracovníka z Izraele. A potom po přednášce a diskuzi, pokud to ní bude zájem, pan prorektor Polčák udělí v zastoupení pana rektora medaily Rogera Skrutna brněnskému spisovateli Pavlu Švandovi. Zítřejší program proběhne od 3 hodin v refektáři Augustiniánského kláštera na Starém Brně. Bude možno vyslechnout přednášku o Masarykovi, o Táni Klementové, diskutovat o neklidném dnešním světě s předními politology, historiky a reportéry, uvítat vydání knihy Arnoštova cesta a poslechnout si také koncert. And now uh, let me now introduce our guest today, Mr. Ariel Feldstein. Mr. Feldstein is a historian at Ariel University in Israel and his specialization is the history of Zionism and its major figures. The topics of his papers and lectures include Theodor Herzl, and David Ben Gurion. He has also worked on project development and other organizational matters during his tenure at several Israeli universities. We are very pleased that he has had a long-term collaboration with our university, especially with the Faculty of Social Studies. He has prepared a lecture for us that will last about half an hour, and its title is Antisemitism, the Seven Variant, Eruption of Wave of Antisemitism in Light of the Iron Swords War. There will be space for your question afterwards. So, Mr. Feldstein, thank you. Thank you very much for coming to Brno, and uh, the floor is yours. Please. Good afternoon. I'm really excited to be here today. Twelve years ago, it was the first time that I came here to this university, and I never thought that it will become my next home. And I'm really glad to be here. And during the ceremony, I started to think about Masaryk and Ben Gurion to compare between the two leaders. And I'm sure there's plenty of unique aspects of their leadership. Masaryk and Ben-Gurion, I think, they are two great leaders in two great nations. And because of that, I think one of the lights during last five months was that your prime minister came to visit and support Israel, or maybe your president. Maybe I'm confused. No? Both of them. Okay, great. Um, yeah. 
and you, and you understand during my lecture why I'm a little bit confused, okay? You will understand really shortly. Okay, then let's start. Okay, I will start with personal remarks. It's really important to, to tell these things now before I start my academic lecture. I have been living in a kibbutz near to the Gaza Strip for 20 years. One and a half kilometer from Gaza. That's it, it's Mefalsim. This is the Ga Gaza Strip. It's 46 kilometers around. This is the Gaza City and the refugee What's camps. Gaza City? I'm a historian, okay? <laughs> and the refugee camps and the kibbutz that I live there in Mefalsim, it's here, okay? It's really near to the Gaza. For, ah, I have the pointer, yeah. Okay, it's here, okay? For me, October 7th is not just a news event, but a personal event. I was there during that Black Shabbat, Black Saturday, but I don't want to speak about it because I don't think that I have uh, the skills and maybe the understanding to deal with such traumatic event. I am a second generation for Holocaust survivors. But now I will put everything aside and analyze the issue from a research perspective as a historian. Then let's start. Few effects about October 7th. On October 7th, 3,000 of armed Hamas terrorists turned down large parts of the Gaza secretary fence using tractors, refugees, explosive, and invaded southern Israel. At the same time, Hamas terrorists in Gaza fire thousands of rockets towards Israel. The terrorists attacked the towns and IDF bases, uh, shooting everything in sight. They broke into civilian homes, our kibbutz and other kibbutzim in our area, shooting, burning, raping, and killing around 1,200 civilians and over 350 were kidnapped, okay? They destroyed everything that we built during last 75 years. There was a festival near to us, a Nova music festival. They killed there, the participants, they raped the young women, brutalized bodies, and kidnapped many of them. I, I, I really sorry, I really apologize, okay? I am not a politician, I am not official representative of the Israeli authorities, I'm just a historian to try to understand. Facts, I'm really sorry, you don't know facts as I don't know it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I can manage. Okay, I'm, I'm Israeli, don't worry, okay? If not, I will bring the IDF to solve the problem. No, no, to protect me, to protect me. I really, I really hap happy that you come here to make provocation, okay? I, I thought that it will not happen. I feel it's my duty. From which point of view? No, from which point of view it's your duty? Yes, yes. Humanity? Humanity, okay. Do you know what's happened to me? To speak up for the helpless? And support, yes, and support, yeah, and support countries, yeah. I'm really sorry. If you want to give the lecture, I will can give you my chair, okay? But don't disturb my lecture. Narušovat program tohoto zhromáždění a schovte si svoje argumenty do otevřené debaty, která bude následovat. A nevykřikujte a volíte se jako civilizovaný člověk. 
A ne jako terorista, který nemá ne, argumenty. Ne. Ne. Pane kolegu, nebudeme rozhádět. Ne, 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 to ale jako jim 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 Vaše rozhodnutí uskoruje debatu na kontroverznu tému. Vaše rozhodnutí je pozvat sem člověka, který je z Izrael, zatím, že Izrael páchá genocidu, nie je to moja chyba, mohli jste s ním to počítat. Samozřejmě, že pá. A už jsem s vámi to taky diskutoval. Preliminary konštatoval. A vy to velmi dobře víte. Tak prosím vás, aspoň neklamte ti. A já tady už nebudu ticho. Klamete tady vy? Ne, neklamte. A buďte ticho. Velmi, vy velmi dobře víte. Už jste nám dělal zle, jako se. Nikdy nerobím zle. Tak jsou ty mě trvalé. Nikdy nerobím zle. Vlastně táhnu za krk. Umíte si jovat. Jo, pardon, ale ne, pošle vám asi tu masaví do otázky. A, a, k tomu je, a k tomu je moja povinnost sa vyjadriť a zastaviť vlastne. Alebo aspoň vyjadriť protest. Pane kolego, je tady 60 lidí, kteří si přišli Kteří si přišli poslechnout, ne vás, ale pana Pelčka. Vy jste jako dobrý, nebo tě necháme vyvést. Nechte si svoje... Já už jsem tě zažil jednou, já toho mám dost. Jako. Je pěkné od vás, že mi týkáte a zároveň požadujete. Už jsme, že jo. Nechte, 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 nechte si svoje vnitra a zapojte se argumenty mádnými a správnými daty. Ale tak aspoň neklamte. Tady nikdo neklame. Klame tedy. Pane kolegu, já vám doporučuji, abyste to už měli. Pane kolego, už to prosím, nerušte, prostě rušíte 60 lidí, kteří chtějí kulturně něco poslouchat. Kulturně něco poslouchat. Jestli vám to vadí, jste tady přece dobrovolně, tak normálně odejdete. Já nevím, co vám dělá. Kudy? 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 Pane kolegu, máme před námi pozvaného hosta. Buď to jí budete poslouchat. Pokud já tu na dáma z hlediska na mě někde hovorí, mě nevím. Ne, zbytečně do tepce a rušíte tu přednášku. Laskavě ji narušte. I really understand that the situation is complicated, but I think that you know, you can wait with your remarks. I will accept them. I will not be against you, okay? But you couldn't come to my lecture and try to change it, okay? I have the right, as a person, as a researcher, to give my lecture. Even if it's nonsense, it's garbage, it's huge mistakes, okay? It's my fault on, on my name, okay? You can wait and give your remarks. I have an even idea. Maybe you will write alternative research. It's okay, and publish it. It's okay, but don't disturb me, okay? I'm not present a state, I just Ariel, okay? A person, as Masaryk said, okay? Okay, now? You did your protest? Okay, thank you that you let me do it. I really appreciate it, thanks. I will try to deal with facts. I am not promised that I will bring all the facts, because you know, historians try to, to have different aspects of, fact, uh, of facts and try to deal with facts, okay? And the facts, they are really confusing, okay? Then I will try to deliver my le lecture. I hope that you enjoy from it, or, yeah, or if you have questions, then it will be great, okay? But I don't try to present official statement of the state of Israel, okay? I just Ariel, as I said before, and I, I, I will glad to continue, okay? The events of October 7th and the war that followed uh, showed dramatic increase in levels of anti-Semitism around the world. The number of anti-Semitic incidents for the period between October 2023 and February 2024 increased six times and I will try to explain where and why and in which aspects. Okay? The increase in antisemitism is also reflected in the online sphere. 264% compared to the preceding three-month period and 400% during the first week of the war. And 1,200 increase for posts, okay? Posts that deal with violence against Jews, Israelis, and Zionists. Most online 
aspects are dealing with the new anti-Semitism, and as I just call it, the seventh variant. The sixth one was during the corona pandemic, but we forgot what's happened three years or two years ago. And because that, I want to deal with the new aspects of anti-Semitism, okay? And as we heard now, it's mostly deal with Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Then let's start. No, I don't think using you. People, you know what's happened now? People will believe that I pay you to come to my lecture and to make all this scene, then I will be better presentation, to give a, a better presentation. You understand what's happened? They think that we have a deal, okay? They don't involve me in this. Thank you. Okay, United States. A 337% increase in anti-Semitic incidents over 200 protests in which anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist expressions were recorded and included support for terror. A 1,000% increase in the number of online posts and 540% increase in fake bomb threats against Jewish institutions and synagogues. In addition, a 700% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in campuses in the state, France. 1,800 incidents were reported. The source of them are from the second and the third generation of immigrants from Islamic countries. In France, four times the number reported in the whole year 2022. Those incidents included a draw of Savastika attacks on youth in the streets, the burning of doors, uh, to homes of Jews and they are marking with Star of David in Paris and other cities in France. In United Kingdom, a 1,000 increase, percent increase, a huge protest march with the participation of 300,000 in London several months ago. Germany, an average of 29 anti-Semitic incidents per day, to compare seven in 2022. 80% of Jewish communities reported that they feel unsafe. The, the, the most threats in Germany are from the Turkish and Arab immigrants, as well as left-wing circles in the country. The raise in levels of anti-Semitism express itself in the hate slogans displayed in public, places in memorial that deal with the Holocaust, Jewish synagogue, and violence against Jewish members in the Jewish communities in Berlin and other places. <sighs> there is example from Paris that they mark Jewish houses in the Jewish neighborhood with Megan David stars. It's original pictures, it's not a fake. You can see the change in the numbers between 2002, 2023, especially after October 7th, and the situation continued to be until these days in the same numbers and even higher. The total of in incidents mentored were divided into six categories. And this is the six categories and uh, the percent. As you may see, anti-Semitic propaganda incidents represented the leading category of anti-Semitic incidents, 43%. 48 of those in the United States with France far behind at 7%, okay? Violent anti-Semitic incidents, about 10%, 33% increase, 46% of violent anti-Semitic incidents happen in the USA, followed by Britain, 16%, online. 
online, we can see the situation become worse, but I want to show you before the map of, of Europe with anti-Semitic incidents during last five months. You can see the difference in colors between the green and the red, okay? And you can see the difference in Europe. Italy is green and Greece is green, but other countries they are yellow or orange, the Scandinavian and Britain and Germany and France and the others. The gray one, it's in gray color because we don't have any information about it, especially because they're small Jewish communities and we don't have any numbers from them and they don't report it about any anti-Semitic events in their communities, okay? And because that the other countries on the map, they are gray, okay? But uh, as you can see that UK and Sweden and France, they are lead countries in Europe and of course United States from the other side. <laughs> One of the new aspects of anti-Semitic attacks, they are online. And you can see that most of the social media, different social media that deal with different aspects, use the platform to present their anti-Semitic events against Jewish, Israelis, and Zionists. And you can see the numbers. 68% in Twitter, Elon Musk, is one of the big friends of Israel. Despite it, his Twitter, the platform X, they use it to present their posts against Israel. Uh, Facebook, it's only 5%. TikTok, 10% and the others. Online, when we try to understand what's happened there, we can discover very interesting conclusions. One of them, that it doesn't matter if you belong to the right wings or to the left wings, you present anti-Semitic ideas against Israel during all the fifth, last five months. And we can see many interesting aspects of this propaganda. One of them, it's tried to explain what the difference between Israel and the Hamas. What the difference between Israel and the Palestinians? And now I will present several, sorry, several posters from the social media. It's tr translation from, from Arabic, and I hope that you believe me that it's correct translation. I could have murdered all the Jews in the world, but I left some of them so that the world would know why I murdered them. It's a quote from Hitler, of course it's a fake, okay? But they use a quote from Hitler to explain why Jews survived the Holocaust. Germany actually planted to kill 11 million Jews during the Second World War. They succeed killed during the war of years only around six millions. And now the Palestinians use Hitler as the image that present their ideas. And one of the interesting questions is about the slogan, from the river to the sea. I'm sure that you heard it. From the river, from the river Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea, there is a land. It means that if this land will be empty, no Jews will live there anymore, and we suppose immigrated back to our countries, or a second Holocaust supposed to happen. What the idea of to, to free this land from Jewish people, from Israelis? What's happened after that? I don't have answers. I'm really sorry. Even as a researcher, I don't have. I, I just ask questions. I don't have answers. I'm, I'm not so clever to have answers. I'm really sorry. But it's an interesting question that I should ask it here in the university. Okay? I don't think that we have answers. 
but there is one of the slogans that the protests against Israel used during the demonstrations in Europe, and particularly in Britain, is between the river and the sea, there will be no a Jewish state. And one of the interesting questions is, what the meaning of this slogan? What the idea behind it? From the right or from your left side, they, com they compare between the Israeli soldier and the Nazi soldier. Okay? Maybe military soldiers or maybe soldiers, they present power, something wrong, okay? But compare between the Palestinian woman and a Jewish prisoner in one of the concentration camp, it's a huge difference. But they continue with the disinformation to present a wrong situation and, and rewrite the history and present the history in new aspects as they present it here. Sorry. Hamas terrorists from the left, Jewish prisoners in the concentration camps in the right. They are human beings. I accept it. I agree with you. That Hamas terrorists, they are human beings. But you know what the difference between them? Okay. But you know what the difference between them? The Jewish people never planted to kill Germans. All their life in Germany, in other European countries, they thought how they can support the countries to be part of these countries. Hamas came to kill us. Okay, for them, we, we have no rights to live in the area, in Israel, particular in the south of Israel, especially, and they came to kill us. Jewish never did it during the history, and especially during 1939, 1945. The Jewish people, they were prisoners in concentration camps and ghettos. They didn't attack Germans, even when they were prisoners. They don't use weapon and anything against the Germans and others that support them. Hamas did everything to destroy our country. And it's a huge difference. And you couldn't compare between Hamas terrorists as a prisoners that we should keep their rights, to give them full rights as prisoners, and we do it. Okay, don't compare us with other countries. We do it. They are terrorists. I'm really sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, then I don't know why you come to university if you know everything. People come to university if they have doubts and they want to ask questions. Okay, I, I'm sure that you know everything. I'm really sorry. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I will manage. It's okay. Okay. Okay, numbers. Let's start to deal with numbers. Auschwitz Birkenau, 1941, 1945. It's not right at all, it's a fake. The Germans start to use Auschwitz Birkenau as a concentration camp in the end of December 1942, beginning of 1943. And it's really important, the years, not because I want to insist because you understand why in a minute, okay? During the Holocaust, one and a half million of children were killed by the Germans and by the others that support the, German, uh, the Nazi regime, okay? The average number, it's not 127 children per day, okay? If you will precisely calculated, then you understand that it's more. From the other side, they try to compare between what Germany did, the Nazi Germany did during the war, to Israel. Okay? Maybe they have the right to compare. Okay? I don't want to argue anymore. I don't come here to fight with somebody. But the question is, if you, can, if you compare between innocent children that we don't use them as a defense shields to our army. That what Hamas did, they use hospitals, UNRWA, um, 
facilities, schools, families as defend, human defend for themselves. They fight against that from the civilians, um, citizens in Gaza Strip. They use their hospitals to keep our uh, uh, young women and men that they kidnap from Israel during the Black Saturday. Okay? We didn't do it with our children during the Holocaust. And when you present such a fake and use the colors of red as a blood at the Sebastic and Magen David, you compare between it, it's just fake. But the problem is that millions of people believe in this fake. And don't confuse them with facts. It's easier to use propaganda instead to study and understand the situation that's happened now in these days in our area. And the last one, the original picture from the right. Okay, Hitler and Mussolini, allies during the war. From the left, it's the President Biden and Prime Minister Bibi, okay? I think there's a huge difference between United States and Nazi Germany and Italy during the war. And I think that if you try to understand Biden, you, you will get one main conclu conclusion, sorry, that Biden tried to protect everyone in this situation. He tried to protect us, but he does huge efforts to protect the Palestinians. It's not easy to do it in such complicated situation in our, in our area. But you couldn't compare between Biden and Hitler. It doesn't matter what. And of course, Bibi, our prime minister, and doesn't matter what I think about him, I couldn't compare him to Mussolini. Okay? When you do such a thing and use the platform of the social media, you produce fake for young people that don't know the history. It's easier to present these fakes, the images that are fake, to deal with facts or understand the complicated situation. It's easier to present it in this way. And the problem is that all this pre presentation has one goal, and I want to conclude what I mean. Sorry. The narrative of the Jews as oppressors, the new anti-Semitism, must also somehow sidestep not only two millennia of the Jewish oppression, but also Holocaust, the largest organized murder of any ethnic group in a human history. There is a huge difference between Holocaust and other events in the modern era. On the right, any uh, ethnic, uh, on the right, anti-Semitism either denied the Holocaust ever happened. On the left, the Jewish are present as aggressive society. We don't have Holocaust because we do Holocaust to the Palestinians. It's the new agenda of the left wings in European society in the, and in the States. During the war, some groups argued that Israel having suffered the traumas of the Holocaust and because that we now doing a genocide against the Palestinian people. Neither, nevertheless, Israel's effort to define itself against Hamas, even if we find that involve killing of Palestinians, even if I agree with you that you are right, and all my lecture based on fake, 
Remember one thing. No. Remember one thing. The genocide charge depends on intent. And Israel as a state is not fighting the Gaza war with the intent to destroy the Palestinian people. It's not our goal. Our aim of this war is hold Hamas responsible for the October 7 attack on Israel and to get back its citizens who are still being held captured. 122 men, women, child and baby. They are in Gaza as captured by Hamas and suffered every day and every night. I hope that you will think about it. Those aims are lawful in every aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Falstein, very much, very much for an interesting and inspiring lecture. And uh, we uh, now have about 20 minutes for a discussion. And it is possible to hear yeah, who would like to ask the first question. Yes, of course, you have now possibility. Uh, you, I'm, I'm not, first of all, I'm not disputing all those uh, and images and that those images were horrible. Uh, that's, I mean, that should be obvious to anyone reasonably, any, 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 any reasonable person. Excuse me? Oh, hello, hello, Vladimir uh, Chitvanets. Nice to meet you. My specialization? None. Uh, M member of public, is that enough? Do, do you have any problem with that? Oh, you, you, you seem angry. Uh, well, so I'm not disputing uh, any of those were terrible, never have. I was disputing factuality of your remarks about one image. You claimed all those people were terrorists. We, all, we know that isn't true. Or at least there is absolutely... Yeah, th there were uh, those identities were. Uh, your sources, please. Uh, yeah, I can uh, source it. A social media, Twitter. No news, ar Facebook? news articles. News articles. Yes. And who wrote it? Don't, don't remember. Middle East monitor. Uh, historian. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not a historian. I'm a member of a public, and I agree that referencing your, or citing your sources is very important. However, I, I apologize. I'm not able to do this for this. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the question. Uh, you claim that uh, Israel has no genocidal intent in Gaza right now. What about the remarks about Amalek? What about uh, uh, remarks by Smotrich and others who explicitly call for extermination of Gaza and ethnic cleansing. Is that, is that not genocidal intent enough? What Smotrich said, I don't agree with him also. Okay, I don't agree. I protest against Smotrich. Despite I suffer from Hamas attack personal way, in personal way, and my family. But Smutrich is not the Israeli leader, okay? His ideas, we don't use them as our goals during the war. I shame that somebody from our government says such a thing. Okay. I really shame, but you know what the difference between us and Hamas? That Smutrich have has the permission to say it. And we have permission not to do it. But in Hamas, if you will protest against them, you will not live anymore. This is the difference. But how you can compare? He's not a leader. He is. He made remarks about Amalek. Amalek for the... You know what is Amalek? Yes. Try to explain me, please. Because I'm as a Jew, I don't know who is Amalek. I'm really sorry. 
Amalek, it's expression. It's expression. It's not a group. It's not a unique figure. Okay? It's expression. Expression of what? Of enemy. Okay? You, you joke on me? You laugh on me? Can't be interpreted in any other I'm really sorry. I'm a Jew. Okay? I know my tradition, my religion. I'm really sorry. Okay? Amalek, it's expression. Now we will celebrate Purim next week. I hope to invite you, okay, to celebrate with me. And we will, celebrate, and we will mention Amalek. Amalek, it's Aman, for example. Okay? Aman was the first. Let me finish, please. Okay? I'm a guest here. Basic relation between guests and others. No, it's a debate, but I'm not in a war. I'm a debate. Okay, I don't need to protect myself. Okay, but I try to explain you something basic. Okay, really something basic. A man was the first one that said, Achashverosh is the king in Persia, that he should, must, kill all the Jews. Why? Because our religion is different. Okay, and because that we call him Amalek. That's all. We didn't kill a man. When Achashverosh understand that a man's plan was to not only to protest against the Jews, but to take his position, he decided to do what he did. But it's not our fault. I know that the Jewish people control the world. I know it as a child. I know it, okay? But there's facts. I really apologize. There are facts. If you want, you can argue with me. It's no problem, but use facts, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the answer. And next, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Maria, and I'm a student of history uh, here at Professor Hanush. And I would like to ask, maybe is. Um, um, I'm a significant question, but what would have to happen to decre decrease the statistics of uh, anti-Semitic propaganda? Do you have any notion of that, or of your own, or any, any official one? Thank you. Thank you for your question. It's a fact. It will be continue. I really said when I say it, because as I said before, I am a second generation for Holocaust survivors. It's not easy, but as a researcher that deals with these aspects, it will really continue, and I have only one hope, that people stop to believe in fake, that people believe there is no black and white, not heroes and victims. The situation is really complicated. As I said before, during the last 20 years, we are living near to the Gaza Strip. In all my life, during all my life, I tried to build bridges to the Palestinians in Gaza. It's not easy to me, sorry. One of the biggest projects was that we tried to establish College for Peace. To build a college between us area and the Palestinian area, with two doors, from Israeli side and the Palestinian side. And to bring uh, students from Gaza and from Israel and maybe from different countries to study together to solve conflicts, how to get tools to solve conflicts. It was a great idea. I succeeded to bring a budget, huge budget from the American State Department to do it. You know what's happened? Hamas didn't agree to do it. No education. As Master X said, I was in the ceremony, and I remember a quote that some, maybe you said it, I really apologize that I don't remember, about education and how it's important. You know what's happened in our society? We still allow to ask questions, despite Smutrich. I am have, have rights to ask questions, to have remarks against our government. In Gaza, you don't have it. If you don't 
get and you don't agree with the Hamas regime, you lost your life. This is the situation, okay? And because of that, I don't believe that situation will be changed. We don't have the power to change it. I think it's not only our problem. I think now it's the nation's problem, what's happened to us, okay? It's not only my personal problem or my state problem. It's more deeper, it's more complicated. History taught us one thing. It's easier to close eyes. It's better to close eyes and don't deal with it. It's okay. But I don't think that this is the solution in 2024. And I hope that others understand that they should not only support us, to support the Palestinians too, because I believe that there are routes that can change the situation. But they need inside, insistent and outside the system to, to force and fight against Hamas. Okay, because Hamas, they don't want any peace in our area. And our mayor killed during October 7th. We lost them in Kibbutz Kfar Aza. And during his period as a mayor of our region, he always said that we are living in 95% of heaven. And our area, it's one of the peaceful places in Israel. But we depend on our neighbors. And the keys, it's in their hands. Thank you. Thank you. The next one, please. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I may not need it. Um, um, I wonder if you, I wonder if, uh, if you have any hope or, uh, you know, any optimism. Yes, yesterday afternoon I watched on CNN um, the program by Farid Zakaria, you probably know him, and you probably um, didn't listen to the pro or didn't watch the program because you were probably uh, traveling or something, yeah? But he talked, he was optimistic, and he talked about, um, a different situation in the Middle East at at present, especially the attitude of of the big players, um, namely the Saudis and Egypt, they have not broken ties with Israel, right. and they um, have economic interest, uh, want to trade with Israel, and possibly develop ties with Israel. Further, do you have because you're an insider? Yeah, we are outside. You, here. you absolutely you? right. We sh first of all, we should have hope. You couldn't manage in such complicated situation if you don't have hope. It's easier to see it only in black and white colors, as I said before. You should have hope, and I, my hope, not only my personal hope, but I think our hope as a state that. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and other forces in our area come together to try to build a different Middle East. With the Palestinians, I don't think that they should leave their homes, okay? I, I say it despite what happened, happened, excuse me, in October 7th. They are our neighbors, it's a, It's a situation in our area, as we call it, a villa in the, jung in, the, in, in the jungle. We should compare with the Palestinians. There is no solution to our situation. But it couldn't be that I try to put my hand for peace and they give me a bullet. It couldn't be anymore. I really apologize. I educated my ch children during all the years that the Palestinians, they are not enemies. There is a Hamas and there is Palestinians. And when they shoot thousands of missiles, I don't know if you understand the situation that you have less than 10 seconds to find a, cell, a shelter. 10 seconds. If, you know, I don't allow to do experiment here, but in 10 seconds try to find a place. It's no chance. And despite the situation that my three children during all their years lived in this area and suffered from the missiles, 
I educated them, not only I, but others, that the Palestinians, they are neighbors. And there is a difference between Hamas and the Palestinians. The Palestinians, they are not our enemies. Maybe it's really strange that I say such a thing after the Black Shabbat. But I still have a hope that it will be changed. If not, I just can take my parents' suitcase and take it and organize my stuff and go back. I don't want to leave my place, my state. I have a right to live there. And the Palestinians have the right to live next to me, but not occupy me. This is the situation. Marta Valeshova, uh, the Bursa of the University. And uh, I'm very happy to be here today and I'm very happy that you came. <laughs> and I uh, just want to say that there are people who are really searching for facts and uh, we are here to listen to what happened and to different uh, opinions. But uh, still, maybe it's a question that everybody's asking, but I would, I'm interested in what you say about it. Uh, we all are quite surprised uh, at the sudden, what, what happened, despite the fact that uh, Israeli not only researches as you are, you are researching what's going on around you. And there is, uh, I don't know, there are spies who, are <laughs> uh, who should be aware of what's going on. So what about you as researcher? How would you, what, what was before October 7th as a researcher uh, thinking or thinking about the Palestinian-Israeli relations, and what's now? What's what's what what we can expect? I'm so lucky that I'm historian. <laughs> I don't need to answer about the future. <laughs> one one issue bothering me, really bothering me, that we were blind before. We spend one milliard to build the shield between us and, the, and Gaza. One milliard euros. 14 floors in the ground and five floors above it. 10 years, we believed that we are in a safe place. You couldn't believe what's happened to people during that Black Shabbat. It's really difficult even to me to, to say that I'm refugee now in my country. You see, I have this one. It's not because I protest this bracelet. It's not because I protest against somebody. It's just a mark that I'm refugee and I'm allowed to stay in, in one place, 50 kilometers from my home. During five months, in 16 meters apartment, that's all. But despite it, I don't lost my hope. And I'm sure that in the end of the day, the solution is discussion, but we couldn't do it alone. European countries and America, they should support new future for the Middle East a new future for the Palestinians, not for the Israelis. We can manage, okay? We have enough money, we have enough equipment to build our life from beginning. But the question is if the Palestinians have, I'm not sure. Because after the war will finish and European will send all the uh, supplies and support to the Palestinians to know what's happened with, the, with these old materials and all the stuff, Hamas will start build their bunkers from the beginning, their shelters, and all the equipment will belong to the Hamas. If we want to keep Gaza, Gaza, the Palestinians, not the Israelis, under the Hamas regime, we can continue as we did before. But I think that we should change it. And as I said, it's not only our mission. It's a mission of all the countries that think about the future, and democratic aspects of the, their nations and our nations together. And because that, I, I think that we should put everything what's happened before, despite the price. And it doesn't matter, really doesn't matter. When I explain to my students, always, you know, we say 
six million Jews murdered during the war, during the Holocaust. And I always explain to my students that we have a problem with this number. Okay? And I try to explain the number, it's not the figure. The situation, it doesn't matter if Hamas murdered 1,200 Israelis or 700 Israelis. It doesn't matter at all. The problem is that the plan murdered us. Even if they murdered 10 Jewish people, Israelis. Kidnapped maybe five, doesn't matter. They did something that we never done. Israeli soldiers never occupied Gaza with a plan to murder Palestinians. And this is the difference. Not true, I'm sure that it's not true. I, 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 you know what I say? I don't come here to, to try to fight with you, okay? Then it doesn't matter, thank you. So thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, it's five o'clock, the last question. Thank you, Professor. I'm uh, Hannah Elichkova from the medical faculty. I would like to ask you um, these uh, uh, this, um, events from the 7th uh, October uh, took a lot of preparation, a lot of planning. So was it uh, an end of a long journey or was there any timing as, uh, as, uh, as for instance, opening another uh, field of uh, of war in the Middle East when we have uh, 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 war with uh, with Russia, etc. And and Saudis talking with Israelis. It it uh, we had feeling uh, several months ago that uh, there was some appeasement that the, the situation was calming down, and now this this uh, what has happened. First of all, as a historian, it's too early to analyze the situation. I need to wait 50 years, and after that I will understand it, maybe. The second thing, I'm too involved emotionally, as you understand, in the situation. It's not easy to try not to be historian in such situation and try to understand it from perspective. And I, I never thought that, as a historian, I will be in such event. I never thought it, really. One of the things that I started to do during the days after, to write a diary. And every day I, 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 I choose a word, one, and try to deal how to be a refugee, what the meaning of home, etc. as a person. As a researcher, it's too early to understand all the picture. One thing I'm sure that Hamas planted, and now you know, the problem was that we are blinded. Barbara Tuchman, she wrote a magnificent book about the First World War, about the leaders of Europe, that they were blind before the war. I think that we were too. Okay? And because that, we paid the price. I'm sure that it will be changed now. But as somebody asked me before, the lady asked me before, I hope that we will not lo uh, lose our hope, okay? I'm sure that we will be clever, we will use our intelligence better and do things better than we done before, but I hope that we still have hope. Because if we don't, if we lose it, we will lose our state and I don't want that we lose it. Okay, thank you. So, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Feldstein for your lecture and thank you for discussion, for all questions, thank you very much. A nyní abych opět přišel do mateřštiny a přišel bych i do jiného žánru, do takového, řekl bych, klidnějšího a opět, opět slavnostnějšího, jak jsem avizoval už na začátku, tak součástí tohoto odpoledne je také udělení ceny, tedy přesněji řečeno medaile Sera Rogera Skrutna, která byla udělena již v minulém roce a nyní v této tradici chceme pokračovat. Určitě v, te, v tomto prostředí 
na této platformě není třeba představovat Rogera Vernona Skrutna. Já jenom připomenu vedle toho, že to byl významný britský filozof, estetik, politolog, spisovatel a hudebník. Takže jinými slovy taková, taková persona, taková renesanční, jak se říká. Tak my si ho připomínáme na Masarykově univerzitě, zejména proto, že se od roku 1979 podílel na činnosti tzv. podzemní univerzity během komunistického režimu v tehdejším Československu a spolu s několika dalšími spolupracovníky kolegy vedl bytové semináře v Praze, v Brně a v Bratislavě, zejména pro ty, jimž režim neumožnil studium na vysokých školách. A dokonce v roce 1985 byl z Československa vypovězen a do země se mohl vrátit až po sametové revoluci v roce 1990. A my si jeho jména, jeho odkazu, jeho činnosti na univerzitě velice vážíme, proto také jsme pojmenovali tuto aulu, aulou Rogera Skrutna a také jsme z toho důvodu vytvořili medaily Rogera Skrutna a nyní bych vám rád představil toho, komu ji dnes předáme. Takže mi dovolte, abych vám představil spisovatele Pavla Švandu a dovolte mi, abych přečetl jeho krátký medailonek. Pavel Švanda je básník, prozaik, filmový kritik a esejista. Na rozdíl se 6. června 1936 ve Znojmě. Asi o něm víte, že patří k tzv. generaci 36-níků, společně s Václavem Havlem, Jiřím Kuběnou, Vělou Fischerovou a dalšími významnými osobnostmi, zejména z toho literárního prostředí. Od roku 1938 žije Pavel Švanda v Brně. Teď zmíním jeho afiliaci k Masarykově univerzitě. V roce 1958 nebyla přijata jeho diplomová práce, ale stal se i tak absolventem dějin umění Filozofické fakulty naší univerzity, i když bez diplomu. V 60. letech pravidelně publikoval filmové recenze v deníku Rovnost a působil jako redaktor v časopisech Tvář a host do domu. Po roce 1969 ztratil možnost oficiálního publikování a během normalizace vystřídal řadu dělnických zaměstnání. Byl závozníkem, skladníkem, dispečerem a také, a to si myslím, že on rád slyší, že byl také vedoucím kina. Po roce 1989 opět začal působit jako redaktor a začal samozřejmě publikovat své knížky. Od roku 1990 vyučoval v Brně na divadelní fakultě. Já mu byl jmenován profesorem. Přispívá dodnes do rozličných periodik, listy, host, proglas, kontexty a podobně. Za své literární dílo i pevný občanský postoj obdržel cenu města Brna. Rád bych zde připomněl také knížky, které znám a které mám rád, zejména Paměť esejisty, Věčný nedostatek věčnosti a také o intelektuálovi, který se necítí dobře. A tyto knížky představují tvorbu, která ve skrutonovském antiutopickém duchu ukazuje přednosti i nedostatky českého intelektuálního literárního života. Já jsem velice rád, že je nyní pan Pavel Švanda zde s námi a prosím ho, aby přišel dopředu a aby převzal určitě a aby převzal z rukou pana zastupujícího prorektora medaily 
Rogera Skrutna. Tak, děkuji. Jménem pana rektora, který tady dnes s námi nemůže být, vám chci poděkovat, že jste dneska mezi nás přišel, že si převezmete tohle ocenění. Já bych možná připomněl ještě jeden aspekt díla dnešního oceněného, a to je diskuze, což je téma, které se táhne vlastně dílem, jak jsem jenom měl možnost se s ním krátce seznámit. A chtěl bych tady vzpomenout, protože nemám takovou životní zkušenost, abych byl schopen ocenit význam dnešního oceněného pro univerzitu a pro město, pro kraj, pro národ. Ale chtěl bych vzpomenout na dobu roku 1989, která pro mě byla, já jsem to zažil jako malý kluk, a bylo to pro mě něco naprosto neskutečného. Každý den byly demonstrace a tak jsem se tady ochomejtal, ale to, co bylo nejzajímavější, tak se dělo přes den a byly tady hloučky lidí, to město bylo plné lidí a ti lidé diskutovali. A to bylo poprvé, co jsem něco takového viděl v životě, že vlastně lidé stojí a diskutují. Tak jsem si na to v tuhle chvíli vzpomněl, protože to téma diskuze je velmi důležité. Je důležité pro demokracii, je důležité pro to, abychom mohli žít ve světě, za který se nebudeme stydět. Takže chtěl bych požádat, nebo chtěl bych poděkovat i za to, že tady tohle téma se v díle našeho oceněného objevuje. A nyní už bez dalšího přistoupíme k předání. Já se přiznám, že nemám ty zkušenosti a ty dovednosti, jako má pan rektor, takže požádám o zhovývavost a potřeseme rukou a předáme zde tuto nádhernou cenu. Děkuji. A já bych nyní poprosil Pavla, to si můžete položit, Pavle, tu medaili, nikdo vám to nevezme. A vás bych chtěl poprosit o pár slov. Děkuji. Je mi velkou ctí být spojován s rodinem Skrutnem. A než bych se obrátil k němu, tak bych řekl několik slov k tomu tématu, které se tu živě diskutovalo. A jak se tak dívám, jsem spolehlivě nejstarší v této místnosti. A já jsem dokonce tak starý, že ještě pamatuju lidi, kteří se v 45. vraceli z koncentráku. A z hodou okolností jsem také s rodiči bydlel v domě. Přišli jsme obyt následkem bombardování. Bydlel jsem v domě, kde se tito lidé vyskytovali. A byl to tenkrát pro mě velmi silný zážitek, ačkoliv ta doba a těch mých 9-10 let nebylo nijak chudé na, na silné zážitky. A lidi, někteří z těch lidí, které já jsem tenkrát poznal, odcházeli do Izraele, byli mezi nimi děti, byli mezi nimi mý vrstevníci. No a například v roce 67, když došlo pak k té válce, no tak jsem na ty kluky myslel, jestli někde leží v zákopu, nebo jestli teda jedou v tom tanku, nebo co dělají. Na tyhle zážitky určili v těchto věcech, jak si můj poměr dodnes. <těk> Roger Scruton udělal pro nás hodně, před převratem po převratě. Ale udělal pro nás také ještě jednu věc, kterou bych chtěl připomenout. On nás bral vážně v době, kdy my jsme ještě tak moc nevěděli, co chceme. Věděli jsme spíše, co nechceme, ale ještě jsme tápali v tom, co budeme chtít. A provázel nás. Jeho původní rady byly poměrně radikální. Ale pak, když viděl, že my potřebujeme čas k tomu, abychom vůbec pochopili, kdo jsme a co chceme, tak spíše byl přítomen. A byl přítomen jako ten, ten 
zajímavý a zvláštní typ muže, který je vždy ochoten ke sporu a jak si nasadit sám sebe a své mínění a zároveň v něm byla jakási setrvalá srdečnost. Je mi velkou ctí být spojován s jeho jménem. Děkuji vám. Já mohu dodat za celé vedení Masarykovy univerzity, že pro nás velkou ctí, že jsme mohli odevzdat Pavlu Švandovi tu medaili Rogera Skrutna. Abychom dnešní odpoledne končili v takovém radostnějším duchu, protože jsme absolvovali náročnou přednášku a náročnou diskuzi, tak si vám na závěr, tak si vás na závěr dovolím pozvat do předsálí této auli, kde je nachystáno takové překvapení. Je to velice jednoduché, my nejsme příliš takový invenční, tak jsme tam nachystali malý přípitek. Tak je to přípitek na vás, je to přípitek k narozeninám, i když pozdním narozeninám, pozdně slaveným narozeninám Tomáše Garika Masaryka. Je to přípitek na naše zdraví a na klid ve světě, spravedlivý klid ve světě. Děkuji vám za dnešní odpoledne, za vaši pozornou účast. Děkuji Pavlu Švandovi, že přišel. Děkuji našemu hostu, panu profesoru Felsteinovi a samozřejmě také panu Polčákovi, pro rektoru Masarykovy univerzity, že se s námi podílel na tomto odpolední. Dovolím si vás také pozvat na zítřek na 15. hodinu do augustiniánského kláštera na další pokračování Masarykovy dnů. Děkuji, přeji vám hezké odpoledne.